Every day. Every day I imagine who he would have been. Christine Bunch is envisioning her son, Tony. At just three years old, her baby boy lost his life. I was barely keeping my head up when he was gone. Before she could reach him, her Indiana home burned down to the ground with Tony trapped inside. In two hours, they came into my hospital room and told me that it was an arson and somebody had intentionally came in to murder me and my child. I couldn't get in there to get my son. But the story took an even darker turn when Bunch suddenly became the prime suspect in the case. From the start, as soon as I was arrested, that was the headlines, that I was guilty, that I said things that I didn't say. Convicted of murder by arson, Bunch languished behind bars for more than 17 years. You lose every single friend that you have. Um, nobody, nobody wants to stand up for you. My family, they stood up for me. They always believed in me. When it happens, you're just like, how did I get here? How do I get out of it? And there certainly isn't a guidebook to tell you how to navigate through the justice system. At first, I wrote hundreds of letters every week begging somebody to take my case. Bunch's case eventually made it to Northwestern University's Center on Wrongful Convictions. They subpoenaed files on the original investigation and found undisclosed documents which directly contradicted testimony by the prosecution during Bunch's trial. At that moment, um, I would have fought anybody because I was so devastated that somebody would intentionally take my life. Just before Christmas 2012, the prosecution <laughs> dropped the charges. <laughs> the number of innocent people who remain incarcerated is startling, even here in Utah. That's why students here at the University of Utah have made it their mission to challenge those wrongful convictions. Incarcerated too, who they think is innocent on a different murder? Since 2004, these law students have helped exonerate six people. They currently have 51 cases under investigation in three jurisdictions and 17 cases in litigation. They're assisting the Rocky Mountain Innocence Project. They have also are in there mourning the loss of a loved one. Jennifer Springer is the managing editor. She says at minimum, three to five percent of the prison population nationwide is innocent. Most are wrongfully convicted through eyewitness identification. It's not just the victim who doesn't receive justice when the actual perpetrator is not incarcerated. Our society suffers because that person who committed the crime is still out there. I share my story because I want everyone to know that this could happen to any person at any time. Wrongful convictions. I mean, truly, do not discriminate based on race, gender, age, ethnicity, you know, religious preference. There's nothing. This could happen to your daughter. This could happen to your grandmother. And we need to be aware that these things are happening.